Matthew 6 and uh, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, my God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow will take, care, take thought, I'm sorry, for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I want to talk in this first installment on this series for anxiety about when you are tempted to worry, when you're tempted to worry. This uh, passage of scripture comes out of a larger passage of scripture, Matthew 5 through 7, that we refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. It was the sermon uh, taught by Jesus early on in his ministry uh, uh, these, that covers these three chapters in which we have at the very beginning the Beatitudes that we've taught for the last 10 weeks or so in Bible study. And in this Sermon on the Mount, one of the things I've talked about over the last 10 to 8 weeks, uh, or 8 to 10 weeks, was uh, how Jesus utilized this opportunity to indoctrinate the disciples and all other would-be followers of his on what I've been calling kingdom ethics, certain principles and precepts upon which the kingdom of God is established. Christ wanted the disciples to understand that those of us who are part of the kingdom of God, that is, we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, God as our Father, that those of us who are part of the kingdom of God, we live by a different set of rules, a different set of uh, morals. We live by a different mindset a different theology and philosophy from the world. And it looks much different from the world. And so it means that we have to be transformed, as Paul would later say, by the renewing of our mind. Because the kingdom kind of looks uh, uh, inverted from the world. Jesus says, blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are they who mourn. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers in the world. These are not the people who are normally blessed. And so now, for those of us who are part of the kingdom, we must have a new way of seeing things and doing things and believing things and thinking things. And Jesus knows our natural proclivity to worry he knows our natural inclination to focus our lives on the things of this world rather than on the things of God. And so he inserts this part in his teaching about the importance of not worrying about the basic necessities of life such as food and clothing. You know, we're all prone to worry, aren't we? Some of us are worry warts, as they say, and we worry about everything. 
The ignorant worry because they don't know enough. The knowledgeable worry because they know too much. The rich worry because they are afraid of losing what they have. The poor worry because they don't have enough. The old may worry because we're facing death and the young doesn't have sense enough to worry. But there's much to worry about in our world. Social problems, war, economic problems, unemployment, crime, disease, so many things that will claim our attention, steal our joy, and distract our service and loyalty to the Lord. And to us, Christ says today, who are tempted to worry and who have a tendency to live in anxiety, he gives us several things to remember. I want to give them to you quickly. First of all, when you are tempted to worry, I would encourage you today to remember you are priceless. Listen to what the Lord says here in verse 25. He says, therefore, take no thought uh, for your life, what you will eat, or what you will drink, nor yet for your body, what you will put on. Listen to these words. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? And then he talks about the fowls of the air and how they don't sow, they don't plant, nor do they reap. They don't store things in the barns, yet our heavenly Father feeds them. A question is raised at the end of this verse, are ye not much better than they? In other words, the Lord says, when we are tempted to be overly concerned, and when we are tempted to be overly anxious, and when we are tempted to worry ourselves to death about the basic necessities of life, the Lord gives us two things to think of. He says, are ye not more than bread or meat? Are you not more than raiment? In other words, our lives consist of more than just what we eat, drink, or wear. That our total value and significance in life is not found in those things. Certainly, we need food and drink to survive. Christ knows that. Yes, we need clothing to protect us from the elements. Christ knows that. But he says our lives are worth more than that. We are priceless. We are created in the image of God. We are his chosen people, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. We are a chosen generation. We have been bought with a price. God has invested the blood of his own dear son into our lives we are priceless and because we are priceless Christ makes sure that we have the necessities of life because that's the only way he can get glory out of our lives is that we have what we need to be who we need to be now some of us think that life is just about eating and drinking and wearing y'all gonna talk to me in a minute now Y'all know I'm tired now by the time I get to 12 o'clock. I need a lot of help by this third service. I'm getting old and decrepit. <laughs> Listen to me. Some of us think our lives, we measure our lives by what we eat, where we eat, how well we eat. Some of us determine our significance by the wrong indicators of success. Some of us think life is about what you wear. And that somehow you are more valuable because of a certain kind of clothes or name brand or designer outfits you're able to wear. Some of us measure ourselves by what we drive and where we live and where we work. If you ask some of us our name, we'll give you our title. Somebody's going to say something to me. But Christ says you are more than food you're more than what you eat you some of us eat to live some of us live to eat but christ says you are more than what you eat more than meat more than raiment and then he says i want you to consider the birds of the air birds don't work at food line they don't work at walmart they don't teach school they don't drive a school bus you know you never seen dr bird you know Superintendent Bird, you know, Reverend Dr. Bird. No, just birds. They just, but they eat every day. They don't punch a clock. Now, let me help you because I have to make, make this clarification every service. Now, I'm not telling you not to work. 
That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> so I don't want nobody to leave today. So I'm free. <laughs> Go quit the job. The Lord is going to feed me. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Christ is saying that we are not to be preoccupied and overcome with anxiety and worry about these things, he says that if he feeds the birds, I have never seen a homeless bird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I have never seen a bird in the shelf. The bird get a worm every day. I've seen birds. I don't know how they got a worm. Out in the middle of nowhere. I said, can't be no worms out here. But the bird was eating. The bird looked good. Looked healthy. Somehow, the bird gets something to eat. And here's what the Lord says. He says, if I take care of the birds, hmm, if I make sure the birds have what they need to sustain them, how much better are you than they? His eyes on the sparrow. So I know he watches over me. My God, my head hurt. Y'all pray for me. You're priceless. You are valuable to God. You're worth more than silver or gold. And because we are priceless, God makes sure our needs are provided for. He will give us the means. He will give us the wherewithal. He will give us the resources. Yes, he gives us gifts and talents and ability. The ability to think and reason. He gives us intellect. He opens doors for us. He gives us drive and motivation and potential and purpose and direction and goals. And when we use our lives as good stewards, God always provides for us. Oh, I know times get tight, times get hard, and sometimes you have more month than money. But I think we can all attest to the fact that even in our toughest times, God has all, y'all give me a little more on the monitor, please. God has always come through, isn't that right? So remember, you're priceless. You mean something to God. You're important to God. You're valuable to God. And you mean more to him than the mere fowls of the air. Not only when we are tempted to worry, should we remember that we are priceless. You go ahead and testify right quick. Tell your worship and neighbor, I'm priceless. It's just in case you didn't know. Just in case you couldn't see it. Behold. Priceless. That's pretty good right there. Okay. Not a, come on, stay with me, Jessica. <laughs> when you're tempted to worry, remember that you are priceless. But then also remember that God is our provider. Now, this, this is important because he goes on to say, verse 27, Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And so why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is, cut into the, is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? In other words, he says, uh, the, the, the Lord is saying, take a look at the lilies of the field. How beautifully arrayed they are. Jesus said, they don't have a job. They don't toil or spin. Now, if God takes care of the grass that grows today and is cut tomorrow, says, won't he much more provide for you, ye of little faith? So at the end of the day, it is important for us to remember that ultimately our provision comes from God. Now, if God is my provider, ain't nowhere in the world I'm ever going to be without the basic necessities of life. 
because God is a faithful provider. He's a dependable provider. He's a provider whose warehouse never runs out of resources. He's a provider that never takes a day off. He's not a deadbeat dad. He's not an absentee father. He is a dependable, trustworthy father who's always providing for his children. I know I have a witness in here. I have two children, and, and as long as I've had them, they're 32, almost 32 this month, matter of fact, and 29 years old, and there's never been a day that I failed to provide for them what they need. And the Bible says, if as a father, earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, then how much more? God is certainly more faithful than I am as a father. He has more than I have. He's more resourceful. He's full of mercy. He's full of loving kindness. He he has no limits to his resources and if we earthly fathers provide for our families how much more David said I was young and now I'm old and never have I seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread elbow your neighbor tell him God is my provider I know you got a job. I know you've been, you went to school and got your certification and got your qualification. I know you get up early every morning and, and go and put in eight hours, but your employer is not your provider. Your job is not your provider. Or oh, if it had not been for the Lord, he's the one that keeps us all night, wakes us up in the morning, gives us health and strength oxygen in our lungs and blood in our veins and strength in our body and smarts in our brains. I said, God is my provider. That's why David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thou rod and my God, what a provider I have. Paul picked it up in Philippians and said, But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory he provides whatever i need when i'm hungry he feeds me when i'm thirsty he gives me drink if i'm naked he clothes me if i'm lonely he comforts me if i'm sick he heals me if i'm weak he strengthens me if i'm lost he finds me if i'm low he picks me up if i get too high he'll bring me back down he provides everything i said everything i need Hallelujah. I got a good father. What about you? And we have, to be, we have to remind ourselves of that because sometimes we overwhelm ourselves with anxiety. Now, look, let me just say this to you. Now, I, now I know you may not have always had three meals a day, but you had one. Hmm. Because God always provides. No, it might not have been steak and lobster. I'm going to move on here. It might have been potted meat and saltine crackers. It might have been Vienna sausages and Ritz crackers. But it was something to eat. Mm. Maybe it was like my mom. He just cracked the egg on top of some corned beef hash. Put that in the oven. But you, <laughs> but you had something. Isn't that right? I know you can't always go to Red Lobster. But you can go to the cabinet. <laughs> you can't go nowhere else. Go to the cabinet. <laughs> Get something. Now, it's always something there. It might have been that canned carnation milk. Y'all young people don't know nothing about that. Mix it with a little water and put it on them cornflakes and go on to sleep. If you had no Kool-Aid, maybe you were like me. You had some syrup water. Pour a little syrup in the bottom of the glass and some ice cold water. Stir that up. <laughs> y'all don't know nothing about that, do you? A wish sandwich. Some of y'all know about the wish sandwich, don't you? You had two pieces of bread and wish you had some meat. Um, <laughs> At a man-made sandwich. Mm. 
a faith sandwich. You know, faith is a substance of sandwich hope for and evidence of sandwich not seen. <laughs> you had some. <laughs> you had something. You sure looked like you had something. All right, I'm meddling now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm almost finished too. Cause I got I got to eat something so I can take my medicine. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, creature. I said when you attempted the word, remember first of all you're what? priceless. You mean something to God. You're important to God. You make God look bad if he don't provide for you. Telling folk, God, your father, and then you don't have nothing to eat. God ain't going to let you make him look bad. Hmm? Nobody else may want him to be their father. If he let his children go without, God has invested too much in you and I not to provide for us. And you know, God provides for us even when we're trifling. That's another sermon. That's a whole other sermon. There. Even we ain't doing our part. Doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about you looking for a job. I ain't never seen no job on Judd Mathis. You watching TV. <laughs> that's another sermon. <laughs> that's another sermon, though. Yeah, that's two different ones, ain't it? You ain't looking for no job now on Channel 7 in the middle of the day. You're looking for something else. You're looking for pity. All right, another sermon. Remember, when you're tempted to worry that God, no, that you're priceless. God is our provider. But here's the third and final thing I want to tell you. When you're tempted to worry, remember your priorities. Here's what the Lord says finally. Verse 32. He says, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. He said, don't worry. Verse 31. He keeps reiterating the same principle. Take no thought, saying, what you going to eat? and What shall we drink? And where, whither shall we be clothed? He said, this is all the things the Gentiles. And when he talks about the Gentiles, he's talking about the pagans, the people who have not embraced God as the living God, the people who, is, who have not accepted Christ as a Savior, not, who have not uh, uh, received God's revelation through his son, Jesus Christ. He says, these are the kind of things that the Gentiles seek after. Th these are the things, the people that don't know God, they worry about material things. They, they worry about the things of this world. They worry uh, about food and drink and, 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 and clothing. He says, no, but you don't worry about this kind of stuff. He says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all of these things, the necessities of life, will be added. So when you're tempted to worry, make sure that you are seeking God first. That you're seeking God's kingdom, seeking God's righteousness. That you're striving for the things of God. That you are in hot pursuit of the things of God. The things that really matter. Not the things that are here today and gone tomorrow. Not the things that won't matter when we come to our dying day. Not the things that never gives us any lasting joy or peace or hope or purpose. But the things of God are those things that, that makes life worth living. These are the things that are eternal. These are the things that please God and glorifies God and helps us to walk in the center of God's will. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, the guidance of God, the government of God, the glory of God. Seek first those things that honor God and when you seek God first there are a whole lot of things that come with God when you get God when you seek after him when you are part of the kingdom God will bless you not only with what you need but with some of the things you want are you hearing what I'm saying now this requires another kind of faith because in the world we are used to living by sight Living by making our own way. Living by making things happen for ourselves. But in the kingdom, we depend on God. We serve him, obey him. We are good stewards of our resources. And then we trust God to provide. It's another kind of faith, but it's also another kind of focus. Because now our focus is on him. Now our focus is on pleasing God. Our focus is on satisfying God. Our focus is on making sure that God gets the glory out of our lives. And here's the thing I've learned and I'm done. I've learned that when we take care of God's business, God always takes care of our business do you hear what I'm saying 
Sometimes we're too worried about career and jobs and starting a family. And all those things are good and important. And God has placed all those things here for us to have a good quality of life and to live as productive people in the world. But he didn't put these things here for us to put them ahead of him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's how we got into this sin mess in the first place. When the Adam and Eve should have been focused on God, they were trying to see how life could be more enjoyable. And mess around and ate from the wrong salad bar. Somebody's going to talk to me in a minute. Yeah, yeah. But when you stay focused on him, he says all these things shall be added. And I've learned that when we're faithful to God, God is always more than faithful to us. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand. But build your hopes on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. Young people, nothing wrong with enjoying the things of this world. Nothing wrong with having a luxury automobile. Nothing wrong with having nice clothes. Nothing wrong with having a little jewelry. Nothing wrong with having the finer things in life. But don't seek after that. Don't place your hopes and dreams. I said, young people, I need to tell some of the older people that too. Because some of the older folks still hustling too. <laughs> Still worried about all the wrong things. Worry says that we don't trust God enough to take care of what we need because we haven't developed that kind of relationship or understanding of him that we can trust him to provide. So when you're tempted to worry, remember that you are what? Priceless. Remember God is our? And remember your? That's the word for today. And the church said, come on, let's stand together. I'm thinking maybe you're here today you say pastor my priorities have been all out of whack I haven't put the Lord first in my life and I've been worried to death about all kind of things 